Hey everyone, what is going on? In today's video, we're gonna go over the top 10 Excel formulas that you need to know. These Excel formulas are gonna be the foundational basis of building yourself up to being a guru in Excel. Let's be honest, Excel is like the Swiss army knife of the corporate world. There's a million and one different functions in Excel, but it only takes a select few to really understand and know what you're doing in Excel. And these 10 formulas are gonna help you stand out above the rest. So with that said, let's go ahead and hop into the first one. All right, our first function in Excel is gonna be the subtotal. I really like the subtotal function because it stays dynamic. Here I have a whole bunch of menu items from Chili's and the subsequent locations, their associated pricing, and then also the number of units sold. We're gonna use subtotal to have a dynamic sum of our table. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into cell D1 and press equals subtotal. We'll press tab to bring down our um, syntax. And then we're gonna see a big list of items that we can select. So within subtotal, you can select sum, average, min, max. You can use count if you wanna see the number of items in the list. But for this purpose, we're gonna go ahead and press nine for sum. We'll press comma. And then we'll use our reference point of all these units sold. We'll close our parentheses and we'll press enter. Go ahead and clean it up a little bit. And now we see that our units sold equals 5,729. But let's say we only wanna select specific items. So if we go to our drop down here, we're gonna select baby back ribs. We're gonna do the half rack and the full rack because we wanna see the total ribs sold. We'll press okay. And we see that our subtotal stays dynamic. So what the subtotal does is it's gonna filter out any unselected items which is really cool because no matter what we select here, it's gonna dynamically calculate and total what we have in our list here. So if I press equals sum, actually I'll do it up here, equals sum, I'll do that. And we see that we have 1181. That's way different than we have in our subtotal cell. So obviously something's going on. We can see that when we entered in that sum, it's only looking at these cells. So if we change this, to select all this data here, we get the same, we tie out with the same amount. However, if we go back and filter, baby back ribs and let's throw in some Buffalo chicken ranch sandwiches, we see that we stay at 651 for our subtotal amount. However, our sum amount is still staying at the 5,700 because it's calculating all the rows that are hidden whereas the subtotal is calculating this dynamic range from our total. So the subtotal is really cool. It's really powerful if you have a big table or a big data set that you're trying to calculate. So with that said, let's go ahead and go into our second function, which is gonna be the if function. So the if is really cool because what it does is it turns Excel into a decision maker for you. So let's go ahead and put in equals if. We're gonna make a logical test as we see here in our syntax. So we're gonna look at units sold again, but what we're gonna say is if D3 is greater than 300, we're gonna put a comma, we're gonna put a quotation in, and we're gonna say keep, quotations, comma, and that's our value if true. So if D3 is greater than 300, we're gonna keep that menu item. But if that value is less than 300, we're gonna say take off menu, quotations and then parentheses and we're gonna press enter. And then we're gonna drop that low. And now we can see we have keep, 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 take off menu because our crispy chicken crispers only sold 127 items. So we're gonna take that off the menu. Unfortunately, the half rack of big back ribs didn't make the cut. And the if statement's really cool because you can start making Excel the decision maker for your data when you set up the parameters. And you can do this however you want. You can layer in multiple if statements, but just be careful of that because you can create kind of a hairy nest of issues with if, if, if statements. And you're gonna have to go back if there's an error or if something breaks, you have to go back and manually figure that out, which can be somewhat of an issue. So just be careful with that. But the if statement is also a really quick and powerful tool if you wanna dynamically see what's going on with your data set or if you have certain parameters in place. Hey everyone, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It'd mean the world to me. I wanna continue making this content, so input from you, the viewer, would mean everything to me. 
So with that said, go ahead and take a look at number three on the list, which is gonna be the V lookup. And the V lookup is where Excel starts getting kind of cool. We're gonna turn this into our own search bar within Excel. We're gonna set the parameters. We're gonna tell Excel what we want to return back and what the data is that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and hop back into our sheet here. And we're gonna to wanna to find the price for the steak fajitas. Let's say we have a big data set and we're gonna to wanna to find what the price is for the steak fajitas. So we're gonna press equals V lookup and our lookup value is gonna be the steak fajitas menu item. We're gonna press comma. Uh, we're gonna select our table array, which would be the data that we're looking for. And then we're gonna press the column index, which is what column do we want Excel to return our value from? In this case, we have our menu items, price, and the units sold. So three columns in total. So we're gonna select number two because we wanna return the price. And then we're gonna close with parentheses and press enter. And we see that we have 14.7, make it look like dollars, so like actual menu price. And then we see that we can turn Excel into a search function. Let's go ahead and change this to the boneless buffalo wings. And we can see that we can change that based on changing our search value to boneless buffalo wings and it's returning that new price for us. Now, a couple words of caution. If we go in and let's say we add another column into our data set, we break our VLOOKUP because in this, we're looking at the second column based on our formula. And there are ways to circumvent this that I won't get into today, but this is just something to be cognizant of. As if you do have a data set where you're gonna be adding in multiple columns or you know changing things around, maybe the VLOOKUP isn't the best option for you. It's really handy if you have like a tab with just data on it and you know that's gonna stay as is, you can set up the function to go look at that tab and then return a value back to wherever you're working from. So let's go ahead and delete this and we see that our value comes back. Also too, whatever the lookup value is, has to be in the first column. So if we change this, and we include column A, we return classic bacon burger, which doesn't make sense. It's a nonsensical report because our formula is now looking at column B instead of starting in column A. So just a pro tip to keep in mind when you use the VLOOKUP. Um, and this is why number seven on this list is gonna be my favorite because it circumvents this and it's a non-issue. And up next, we have our count function. This is really handy if you need to know how many items are in your data set. So if we head back into our Excel worksheet here, I'm gonna press enter count, and then I'm gonna select our value range and press enter. And we see that we have 20 items listed here underneath price. But let's say we wanna do the same thing for our specific menu items. I'll go to enter count, select all of these, press enter, I get a zero. Why is that? The reason is, is that the count function specifically looks at numerical values. So if we wanted to adjust this to look at values containing text, what we'll do is we'll go to equals count a with an a at the end. And this says here counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. We'll select our data set, we'll press enter, and we'll see that we get 20 items listed here. The count function is really great if you need to count how many items are in your data set, or if you wanna count how many sales came through that month with transactional reports. So I really like the count function for those. It's very basic and very straightforward, but it also does have some power built behind it as well. So number five on our list is gonna be the LIN function, which is a really cool tool within Excel. Back in our Excel workbook, we're gonna do equals LEN for LIN, and then we're gonna select the text Atlanta, Georgia, we see that we have 11 characters in that cell. You might be asking, why would I need to know the number of characters in a cell? Well, if we wrap this win function, if we do left, comma, text, comma, win, select our text again, close it, and we do minus four, close it, we get Atlanta. So what we can do is we can actually subtract characters from our data set to clean things up a little bit. So if you download a file and you know you get into a CSV and it's kind of messy, 
but you need to clean things up, you know, in a very quick fashion versus manually going in and calculating and filling things out. You can have Excel do all of the hard work for you. So we can combine the left and the lend function to clean up all of our city names, drop the, the state abbreviation, and now we have a very clean city list. All right, so number six on our list is gonna be the text function in Excel. And you might be asking like, why would I need to use text? That sounds like it's a pretty basic formula or function within Excel. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what it can do real quick. So in our Excel worksheet, I copied in some dates, but they all came in as these like numerical characters that don't really tell me what the date is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press equals text, select our value, comma, quotations, and then I'm gonna format our text with M, 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 and then Y, 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 close the quotation, close the parentheses, and now we see we have the year and the month listed in a very clean, presentable fashion. And we can drop it low, and this cleans up all of the data for us and if you want to, you can copy this and paste as values over here, or we can take a look at this in a different way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click into my formula up here and press MMM, and then leave the year as is. And now we have an abbreviated version of NOV for November. I would drop it well. We have an abbreviated list of our months with the corresponding year. We can also throw in days. We'll press DD space. And now we have the day with the corresponding month and the corresponding year. So this is a really good way if you do copy in dates into Excel and it comes in not the way that you were expecting. The text is a very quick and easy way to go ahead and clean up that data as it comes into Excel. All right, number seven on our list is probably gonna be my favorite. It is the index match function. So if you press equals index, we'll go ahead and explain this real quick. Index is the value that we're gonna to wanna to return. So what it does is this indexes your data set and we'll have a full list for you to be able to retrieve from. So I'm gonna select units sold and then I'm gonna press comma and then we're gonna layer in a second function for the match function and our lookup value according to the syntax here is gonna be the boneless buffalo wings. We'll press comma and then we'll select all of our menu items because that is where that menu item lives and we'll press comma again. And then we have a couple options here, depending on what kind of function that you wanna run. What we're looking for is an exact match. So we'll go ahead and press zero. We'll close our parentheses. We'll press enter and we see, boom, 366 units sold. And guess what? That matches what is in our data set. So you might be asking, what is the difference between the index match function and then also the VLOOKUP? Remember what I showed you earlier about inserting a column into Excel? Let's go ahead and insert one here. Look at that, it stays the same, it doesn't break. And it doesn't matter if you add a row or a column, no matter what we do, we're still indexing the same columns and the same rows, that's not gonna change. So this one's a little bit more dynamic than the VLOOKUP because we don't have to worry about changing our data set or manipulating the data in any way. The index match will still do its job and it's gonna remain flexible during that. So I really prefer the index match over a VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP because it is dynamic and it is flexible. It is one of my favorite Excel functions. I use it almost every single day at work. And if you implement this into your daily routine, you're gonna be able to stand out like a pro in no time. Number eight on our list is gonna be concat. This one's really cool if we download a data set like we have here in our Excel workbook, but we wanna be able to combine some things because it comes in just not the way we wanted it to. Classic examples of this are state and cities if they're separated, names and email addresses or names and employee IDs, email addresses, whatever the data set might be, um, we can manipulate it with the concat function. So as an example here, I downloaded my data set, but the city and state are separated, but I wanna see them together. So what I'm gonna do is press equals concat, select my text, I'm gonna press a comma. And what I'm gonna do here is, I'm not gonna just combine these two, because if I do, it doesn't really read all that well. I'm gonna select my city and I'm gonna put a quotations, comma, space, quotations. And what the quotations does is it gives you the ability to tell Excel the exact characters that you want 
within your function. So if you wanted to put Atlanta and put into quotations A and D for and, you could do it that way. Uh, in this case, we're gonna do a comma and a space, but the quotations is telling Excel, I want to return these characters as I put them in between the quotations. So it's really handy when uh, using the concat function and you wanna format your data in the correct way, but we'll press F3 for Georgia, close the parentheses and we'll press enter. And look at that. Now we have our city and state very cleanly and tightly put together. And we can see that this reads all the way from top to bottom and it returns our list just the way that we wanted it with the city, the comma and the state correctly corresponded. So the concat function, formerly known as concatenate, is a very powerful tool within Excel, especially working with like broken data or if you download something that doesn't read correctly, you have the ability to manipulate it or join it together with the concat function. Number nine on our list is gonna be the if error function. And this one's really handy if you're working with a data set, but there might be some errors along the way within the data set, we can filter that out. We can have Excel give us a different value if there is an error within our data set. So looking at this data set here, we see this NA down for San Antonio, and we can't have that. Now let's say we're gonna send this off to a leader. We don't wanna see any sort of broken cells. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to G3 and we're gonna wrap our formula with an if error. And the way the syntax reads is if there's an error, the first one will be, here's our value. The second one is if we press comma, what is our value if there is an error? We're gonna say not, we're gonna put in quotations and say not found quotations, parentheses, and press enter. And you can see that we have valid data for the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this low and we see that our San Antonio value now returns not found because of that NA. So if error is really handy, if you need to manipulate something, if you have an equation somewhere along the lines that isn't working properly, you can say, instead of not found, maybe check. And we can drop that low. And now we can see that changes the check. We're gonna throw some additional formatting in there and we're gonna say equal to check. We're gonna fill it with the red. And now we can see, hey, this formula is broken. We need to go take a look at it. And this sticks out like a sore thumb. So adding that extra layer of contingency with the if error and the conditional formatting prevents us from running into any issues if we do have a broken formula somewhere within our Excel workbook. And this is just being a good analyst or being a good Excel user. The more layers of protection that you can build into your workbook, the better off you're gonna be. All right, the last functions on our list, number 10 are gonna be the today and now functions. So hopping back in, let's say that we wanna make sure that we have some sort of check of like, hey, when did we change this data in Excel? When was the last adjustment made? When did you know we manipulate something in this workbook? So what we can do is we can press equals, today, we'll press tab, and we don't have to put in any values in here. All we're gonna have to do is just close the parentheses, or you can just do the today with a single parenthesis and press enter, and it's gonna return the month, the day, and the year for you. But let's say we're on a time crunch and there's gonna be multiple people within this workbook and multiple times, and we want it specifically timestamped. You can actually do the equals now function and then same thing, you don't have to close the parentheses or submit any values. We'll press enter. And what this does, it gives you the month, the day, the year, and then also a timestamp as well. And now we know prepared by Kyle on July 19th, 2025 at 2.55 PM. So the today and now functions are really cool if you want to add you know, any sort of accountability, or if you want to know when something was adjusted or changed within that Excel workbook, you can give it a specific timestamp, or you can also include it with conditional formatting. So if anything is overdue or falling behind, you can add that conditional formatting in there. So that way it highlights red, just like our check did with the Buffalo chicken ranch sandwich in San Antonio. And we can see like, hey, this report is falling behind based on this timestamp that we see in there. So again, it's all about leveraging the functions within Excel of working smarter, not harder. And the biggest thing too is when to use these functions. Having the knowledge of them is very important 
but also the, the ability to know when to employ them into Excel is also important as well. So I want to hear from you. What are some of your favorite Excel functions? And maybe we'll do a video covering them. I'll catch you guys in the next one.